All right. Now, I'll start with you first, Robert. Uh, in the upper house at the moment, I know it's the early days of the government, um, you're pretty keen on getting rid of these lockout laws. What's your sense? Obviously, Labor, um, in part, was a little... I don't know where they sit on this, but what's, uh, what's your view of it being able to be reversed in the upper house and then they've got to deal with it downstairs? Look, I think, I think we've got a pretty good chance of getting uh, Labor across the line. Uh, whether they'll actually do it with a complete abolition and removal the way I want is another issue. I've got to have that debate with them and we'll put it to the House maybe in the next week or two. Uh, I think the other crossbenchers, the Greens and the animal rights people, I think they're, they're on side as well. Um, I don't think I'll get Fred Nile. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I think I can get uh, One Nation and Paul... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Mark, across the line. And this is something that really needs to be done. I mean, it, we can keep talking about it. The government did a review a couple of years ago and guess what? They allowed them an extra half an hour. Whoopie-doo. That's not going to create any new businesses. That's not going to create any extra activity in the marketplace of the City of Sydney, whether it's Darlinghurst, Cockle Bay, King's Cross or Haymarket or even The Rocks. Why does all the business have to go to uh, Star Casino? I just don't get it. 170 businesses gone, uh, foot traffic down by 40 to 80 per cent. Uh, what do we got to do to get this city going again? Uh, it's, it's something that really needs to be done, and it's not just a matter of being populist. If you're worried about security, then do something about that. But you don't have to shut the city down, get rid of the pulse and just destroy it. It doesn't make sense, and we should really fix it. Well, I mean, there's, there's also this conversation where at the, at the local government level they're trying to move to maybe 24-hour trading in some parts of town just to get the joint vibing. And we're not talking about, you know, alcohol venues or the rest of it here. I mean, John Robertson, I'm sitting in a town right now that I've got to say one of the many things I like about Melbourne, but the thing I love more than anything else about Melbourne is this joint is open late at night. Well, I think, uh, Paul, I, I've got a bit of a different view to Robert on um, the lockout laws, and I think, you know, what we've seen played out in Sydney with the lockout laws is the publicans have run a very effective campaign convincing everybody that Sydney's closed. Um, if you actually look at the detail of the lockout laws, you can still get a drink till half past three in the morning. You just can't get into a pub after 1.30 in the morning. But the publicans have been very good at running this whole campaign. I remember at the time when this all started and I was opposition leader, I walked around King's Cross on a Friday night with the police and then I did the same thing uh, the following weekend with the police in the Sydney CBD. And I can tell you, mate, uh, it was a circus. The cross was just a bloodbath. And I remember walking down Darling Street at about 2am, watching people punch on outside the local McDonald's, then walking round the corner and down William Street uh, and coming to a pub. And two blokes flew out the doors like you'd see in the old Western movies, almost with their feet <laughs> off the ground. One bloke had claret streaming from his face and the other bloke came out and was ready to go him and looked up and then saw um, the, uh, the local area commander and the licensing sergeant stand there and couldn't believe his luck that he walked out straight into us. Um, Sydney was a bit crazy, particularly in summer, and when you talk to the police about it, I can tell you uh, they were very worried about what was going on. I, I think there's a way forward here, but I don't think it's as simple as saying, oh, you know, we are going got to get rid of the lockout laws. Um, I've heard all the arguments over the years about, oh, if, if Sydney's a global city, you know, you've got to be able to get a drink at 3am in the morning. If that's the measure of a global city, um, I think they need to relook at the measure. We do need to allow restaurants and we do need entertainment facilities and those sorts of things. I'm just not convinced we need to keep pouring grog down people's throats at 3am in the morning. Robert, why is he wrong? Well, he's wrong because, uh, you know, we are mature, we are... We are uh, adults. Uh, I do remember exactly the same stuff in King's Cross when I used to get around there when I was 18, 19 and 20 years old. Uh, you know, what's the difference between Sydney and Melbourne? Well, Sid uh, Melbourne isn't run by a bunch of wowsers and Sydney is. Uh, that's the difference. I, d I just don't think that you do need to be so tough. I think you've got enough controls, you can put enough restrictions and it's not just a matter of pubs and bars. Small businesses have disappeared small restaurants. You know, that's the beauty about Melbourne. You're quite right, Paul, in what you're saying. Uh, you know, you can wander down these alleys, you can find a nice little bar. Uh, and the City of Sydney now, as you quite rightly say, want to try and encourage that in Sydney. But unless you actually start to pull people in and keep them there longer, uh, you know, what are you going to do? I, I think there, there can be a middle ground, but what I'd like to see is that governments start to actually do something. Get some of these live music venues going again too. That's the other thing that we haven't mentioned. I mean, live music has just completely been destroyed in Sydney, not just there, but all over the place. 
And uh, well, yeah, this... but, 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 but I guess, you know, I don't want to have a debate about this, but I, I, the point I'd make is this, that there was a level of arrogance that was demonstrated by a lot of these publicans. Uh, I spent a fair bit of time talking to these guys. I had them in my office and those sorts of things. Um, we had two young boys killed with one punch hits, um, families that were ripped apart. You know, the, the Kellys is a classic example um, where Thomas was hit, you know, his younger brother has, has committed suicide. I mean, these are events that have actually had a long-term impact on people. These publicans, mate, uh, were not fair dinkum. I mean, they'd take the view, they'd fill people full of grog, um, and I can tell you, because I sat with them in my office, they'd fill people full of grog. When they started my playing up inside their venue, they'd throw them out on the street and then they'd wipe their hands with them and they'd go, oh, my job's done, my venue hasn't got someone's violent that's behaving violently in it. What they didn't do was take responsibility for the fact that they'd taken their money, they'd filled them full of grog and then chucked them out on the street and then they were creating mayhem in those areas. And, and that's why we ended up with what we, we've ended up with in Sydney. Now, they're not, they're not serious about live music. I mean, they don't want live music. They'll put poker machines in because that's how they make their money. Um, I mean, if we're going to have this debate, we've got to be fair to income about it. <laughs> Um, there's a cultural difference between Sydney and Melbourne as, as well, mate. I mean, I've been out late at night in Melbourne and, you know, years ago and more recently, it's nothing like Sydney. It's never been anything like Sydney. I love Sydney. Uh, it's where I've grown up and it's where I spend all my time. But, mate, if you want to go out and have a good time and have a good night out, have a meal and actually feel OK, Melbourne's got it in spades by comparison to Sydney and it's not because of lockout laws, I can tell you. Well, but, you know, that said, I, look, I also think Brisbane's coming along pretty pretty good at the moment. I mean, I certainly think sort of the, the, the valley, the restaurant culture, all the rest of it here. Look, I always think that there's always a good point about responsible service of alcohol. About the, I mean, I always find this amazing, that the law says, you know, we can boot you if you've drunk too much. Well, if you're the source of the place where they've drunk too much, well, then maybe we're not quite policing that enough. I also think that... Uh, and I understand what you're saying about the poker machines, but let's be honest, as a bloke who plays the pokies... There are plenty of joints in the CBD plenty that are open till 4am. Yeah. Yeah. All the way. You can sit there, there's 24-hour trade, you can play a poker machine. It's not like these people are being uh, you're denied the opportunity to do that. So, it's interesting. Last word to you here, Robert, because we started all of this and then I've got to take a break. Yeah, look, um, well, look, we haven't had anyone lobbying us in relation to this, except I do think back to about 2014 when we had the then owners of Bourbon Street uh, come and talk to us. And that's a restaurant. And their business is completely destroyed. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, you know, the pub owners, yeah, they're part of that process. But in the end, what we really got to do, if you, things aren't going to improve by just uh, shutting things down, we've seen, we've seen the levels of violence, if you want to refer to it that way, uh, shift from those areas in the city where it's been shut down to other parts of Sydney. Uh, Newtown and other places like that have got an increase. There's no question of that. So, in the end, what have we actually achieved? Well, we've shut down Sydney... Uh, I think we've just got to open it again. We've got to get on with things. And if you don't actually start that process and you actually believe that everyone's potentially a violent offender, well, then you'll treat everyone like a convict and that's got to change, as far as I'm concerned. All anyway. right.